Welcome back to Printex Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to find an image off of the internet and mock it up on a product. So um, one great resource that I really want to um, to tell you about is called pixabay.com. It's a um, royalty free um, public domain uh, place to find artwork or place to find pictures. Um, so in light of Valentine's Day. I'll just go ahead and do a general search for Valentine's Day. Notice how if I have all images I can choose from photos, vector graphics, illustrations, and videos. But we'll just keep it simple um, and find this uh, sweet little cloud, heart-shaped cloud. So we'll download it for free. All you have to do is sign up. So we'll save the file. Click OK. OK. So let's just put it on the desktop, save. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and open Photoshop. So um, I'm going to use this image of this pillow here, but let's go ahead and create a new file. So file, new. Um, normally our mockups are um, 700 by 700 at uh, 200 or 100 dpi since we're just going to be showing uh, that on the internet and it's not going to be printed so 100 is fine color mode rgb is fine um, will work just fine and then background contents will make it white you'll see here this is transparent with the checkerboard and if we wanted to do that we could but we'll just go ahead and keep it simple um, and we'll do cloud heart okay so just give it a name so um, to drag this pillow over to my other file, all you have to do is take it from this layer, uh, layer panel from the file that it's in, and then just drag it over to your window. That's one way to do it. Um, so we've got our move tool here, so we'll just set that right in the center. We want to make it a little bit bigger, so we'll do, um, actually I'll show you how to do that. So. Um, it's Command T or Free Transform. So we'll just go to Free Transform, open it up, or I should say make it larger, and then hit the check mark, OK. Make it there in the center so we don't need this file anymore. I'll just close that up, don't save. And then we'll bring in this cloud, so we'll just drag it to the image in Photoshop. And notice how it uh, lands right on top of there. So we'll go ahead and press the check mark and then we'll come into full screen here. So notice that um, on the layers panel, it has this little sort of piece of paper that has a fold on it. So that means it's a smart object. So that uh, doesn't really necessarily mean it has uh, the qualities of a JPEG image. So we're gonna rasterize the layer to keep it, uh, and you see how it went away. So now it's just a regular, um, a regular image. So we want to superimpose this cloud image on top of the pillow. So one thing we need to do is make it about the same size. So we'll need to go back to our um, free transform tool, which I'm so used to using um, I'm so used to using keyboard shortcuts that I forget where it is, but let's just go to help. So if we go to free transform, it'll give us, um, it's an edit. So, okay, so we'll do free transform and then we'll make it a little bit bigger than the pillow itself. And then we'll press the check mark or you can just press enter. So we want to be able to see around it. So we'll go to the opacity here and we'll take it from 100% down to about 74. That's pretty good. Um, or 67. So that gives us a sense of um, how big the pillow is uh, relative to our image. Um, so we may need to make some adjustments here. Um, so let's go ahead and do edit, free transform again, and let's make it just a little bit smaller. And, you know, sometimes you can fudge it just a little bit. Uh, it's good to, to not um, make it larger from the middle of any of these. It's better from the side. And if you press shift at the same time, it will keep its proportion. So generally, most of the time you want to enlarge or um, uh, minimize 
your image is using the corner and shift. So that's pretty good. That's pretty much how we want it. And we're, we're covering it on all, on all sides. So we'll hit OK. Um, so we have our pillow here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take the view off of the cloud. And then we'll go to our pillow layer. So what I'm going to do is I want to select this entire pillow um, and have a selection of the pillow. So one of the ways to do that is um, with your magic wand tool. So you can click the surrounding area and then just go to selection, inverse the selection, and then it selects the pillow. So that's one way. Um, you can also go to the lasso tool here. And if you hold it down, you go down to the magnetic lasso. And so basically that, um, if you see how it's kind of mag magnetically sticks to the edge of our object of whatever we're drawing here this in this case it's the pillow so you want to click kind of a lot because that anchors it down um, you'll notice that if you start to stray like it'll kind of go out in the middle um, we can fix that in a moment but so we'll just go ahead and quickly go around the edge this is a lot easier because our background there's not a lot of busy things. It's not like a kid's birthday party where there's a bunch of colors and textures. So um, it's simple is better. Um, I should say simple is easier. So we're almost done here getting our selection and then okay so we have this giant hole. We're going to go back to our marquee tool and I'm going to change it to the elliptical one. So I want to press the shift and notice how it gives us a little plus sign. So I'm basically just going to um, continue to select what we missed. So it just needs a little bit of finesse here. And if I zoom in, so if I press the Option key, see how it has a minus sign, so we can get rid of that little bulge. And then I'll press Shift one more time to get this last little corner. Okay, now since I'm a somewhat perfectionist, let's just get that last bit. Okay, so now that we have our selection, what's great about this selection is like, what if we have to um, go pick up our kid or we have to run an errand. What you can do is you can go to select save selection so you can save the selection pillow out outline okay and then uh, you can deselect it and then load the selection pillow outline and there it is once again. Okay, so now that we have the outline, I'm going to hide the pillow layer and then bring up the image layer once again. So I need to click on that layer, that image layer. And so now we have um, this outline here. Uh, the outline will now apply to whatever layer it's on. In this case, it's the, uh, the cloud. So one of the things that we should do with this outline or with this selection is refine the edge of it. So if we hit refine, um, actually let's go back. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch these. So if we hit refine, um, we've got our red view here, so our view mode, um, our adjustments. So you notice that it's a little bit darker um, here, or let's go ahead and view it here, where it overlaps the outline of the pillow. So we can shift the edge some and that gives us a little bit of wiggle room so just kind of refining the edges here contrast this is giving us notice how it makes it real kind of uh, jaggedy and sharp and then we can soften the edges so notice that's 7.2 pixels so that's pretty wide we want to usually stick it be, uh, around between zero and one, maybe zero and two at the most. Um, so we don't really need that much. And then smooth, but you know, you can always play with Photoshop and see what works best for you. So this is a pretty good, nice soft edge. So I'm gonna hit okay. And um, so I'll go back to the image. And so all I'm gonna do is um, 
good thing to always, always, always is duplicate your layer. So I'm just going to duplicate a layer and then I'm going to hide one. So I'll, I'll even put it behind the background or I'll put it behind the cloud. Okay, it's always good to duplicate your layer just in case you need part of it or you need it or um, something happens. And always save your work. So always file, uh, save. Um, I didn't do that because it'll take too long. But anyway, okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to inverse the selection again. So we go to select, inverse, and then that surrounds everything outside of the pillow. So whenever I hit delete, so I need to be on my right layer, on my correct layer. So whenever I hit delete, it gets rid of everything behind um, our image. So deselect, and we basically have the shape of a pillow um, out of our image. So if I turn on um, my pillow layer, you can see the texture coming through again because that top layer is at a low opacity. So um, what your customers are going to get is a combination of um, what you see here and um, sort of this one here with the lower opacity because uh, the texture will show up after it's been printed. And this is for sublimation printing, uh, which uses um, any most media, photographs, vector, um, anything that can be printed on a sheet of paper. So that's basically what you have here. Um, if we wanted to add some shadows, we would add a new layer. So we'll just call that shading. And a couple ways to do it. One is to grab your uh, brush tool. And so we want it to be on the foreground color. So we just want to change it to black. Um, we're going to change the opacity. So now it's at 20. That's pretty good because um, we don't want it too too dark. So if I move it up to 99, what we're going to get is this uh, dark, uh, really super dark. If I change it to 20, you'll see that it has a lot uh, much lighter, um, more better for shading. Okay, so I'm going another thing I want to point out is the hardness. So you see how this has a very fuzzy edge. That has to do with the hardness here. So the hardness is at zero. If you bring it to 100, then it'll give you your normal circle. Okay, so I'm going to go back in history and get rid of those. So we're still on our shading layer. And let's take the hardness back down. Opacity is 17. That's pretty good. The size is 87. I'm just going to take it down to 74. Okay, so just get, you know, where the... Um, where the folds are, maybe just give it a little bit of shading around the edges. And so this can help us if it needs to look like it's sitting somewhere, you can give it a little bit of shading or if there's like a light source on one side. So just give it a little bit of, and you know, um, we'll have to clean it up around the edges. Notice how it uh, got a little bit of a, um, the fuzz around the edge. So, um, and by the way, so all of your, basically all your tools are, um, all of your sizes are, um, all of your brushes, erasers are, are going to be here at the top. So we'll just get a little bit of erasing going on. Notice how the opacity is 50. Let's jump it up to 94 so we can clean up, clean up these little edges. And sometimes, most of the time, this takes, you know, a little bit of finesse and uh, attention to detail. I used to be a high school art teacher, so I'm, I'm, I'm big, big on uh, craftsmanship. Okay, so maybe, here we go, we've got our shading on one side. Um, maybe we'll want to do just a little bit more at the bottom. So what are we on, 17? Yeah. Okay, one other thing you can do is take your layer blending tool and then maybe find something that uh, works to give it a little bit more of a believability or work with your opacity here. So thanks for watching.